to AEFTV in association with Angelati. I'm now joined by His Excellency, the Honourable Advocate Siddiqui, Siddiqui Keborang, uh, who is the uh, Energy Minister for Botswana. Uh, first off, uh, welcome. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you, thank you for having me in the program. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's great that you could give us the time to be here. Uh, we, uh, we had a lot of uh, uh, energy ministers talking to us about their in individual challenges. Just, just, to, uh, just to kick us off, uh, you know, can you give us a little bit of an overview about uh, the uh, situation in Botswana's energy sector, with, you know, uh, uh, what your challenges are and uh, things like that? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I became a Minister of Minerals, Green Technology and Energy Security some last year, October. Uh, the emphasis has been to green, uh, green technology and energy security. In terms of my ministry's mandate, it is essentially to coordinate you know, energy, you know, the energy sector and ensure that there is sustainable economic growth. Uh, what are the challenges? I think the immediate challenge from where I come from being a coal-fired power-driven you know, driven economy is that renewables, in terms of renewable energy, account for less than 1% of our total energy mix. And we are in the process of moving from coal to renewables and all other you know, energy mix to ensure that we, we have cleaner and cleaner energy. What's your target on that? I mean, in terms of, you know, when you set out to do something, you set yourself targets. You yes, know, and you uh, the immediate target, uh, and this is what we have just done, is that we, we have uh, put a tender 400 megawatts uh, of solar, uh, which is ongoing. The, the, we, closed, we closed the tender on the 14th of this month. The target really is that in the next couple of years, Hopefully, under five years from now, we have 10% of our energy needs being from renewables. And um, you know, renewable energy brings its own characteristic uh, to the grid. Yes. Uh, uh, you know, it, it works when it wants to work. Yes. You can't control yes, it. Yes, yes. Uh, so, uh, you know, a, a lot of other energy, uh, energy ministers have been saying that uh, you know, actually, another part of the equation needs to be uh, um, uh, looking at the grid infrastructure mm -hmm. so that you know. The, 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 the power characteristics mm. that re renewables provide can actually be evacuated because yeah. no, no good having a solar plant if you can't yeah. use it. Yes. Uh, are you facing the same issues? Is, is that your next step as well? Yeah, yeah. True, true. We are facing the same issue. Mm. Uh, one of the problems is storage. Uh, with storage, makes it makes renewables quite expensive. Two, we are also faced with uh, we. Unfortunately, fortunately for us, we are also upgrading our national grid, but that's not enough because. Although we have 300 days of sunshine, uh, those days when uh, you've got a cloud cover and other things, you are not able to move your energy. Uh, you also, you know, one of the problems we have obviously is that we have 20% of the population uh, of the grid, and therefore you need to be able to move it to to the 20% that is of the grid. You need to be able to store it. We have power that is highly subsidized in Botswana. The question becomes, do you still subsidize on renewable energy? And what is the cost of subsidy to the economy? So those are some of the issues. Because, that because that's a big challenge, right? Because, because if you, you rely on an energy sector, mm -hmm. you know, we've had the same thing here with feed-in tariffs. Yes, you know, we're, yeah. we're, now we're trying to face that because yeah. we're going like, hang on a minute, if we, if we keep having feed-in tariffs yeah. or subsidies, yeah. we're, yeah. we're not building a, a market-based energy yes. sector. What's your view about what the, uh, what the best way is in terms of tackling that? I, you know, I accept that it's a long-term play, yes. uh, but what are some of the things that you're specifically looking at and going, okay, Rihanna, we need to focus on this uh, um, uh, in order for us to, I would imagine the long-term aim is to have a non-subsidized energy sector. Yes, but, yes. Uh, you know, just tell us a little bit about your vision for that journey. Uh, it is also a, a politically sensitive issue. Because you know you have got a, you know, a target market, and that is your population is used to paying a particular price. Already they are complaining that the price is high, but the reality is that they are paying, they are paying below market price. And in terms of going forward, I think you know we are looking at the private sector investment uh, with the hope that once the private sector it comes with this external funding. Uh, it takes away government's obligation to be funding the projects because traditionally where I come from, government has been the, 
the only sponsor and funder of you know uh, power projects and therefore we are currently you know looking at how uh, we take advantage of the private sector of international organizations how is it that they can try and subsidize our our power but you know it's, it's a battle that we are currently facing and we hope that going forward in the long term we should be able to find an answer and we're also trying to encourage rooftop uh, solar systems yeah. so that people can whatever they don't use they can fit back to the grid because yeah. because because that is the interesting challenge isn't it because you, you're you're moving away from uh, you know not that long ago your your only option was to build a big power plant and move things that way so a very central grid uh, and now you've got this uh, not insignificant challenge of having the ability to create a distributed network yeah. and, and, and rooftop solar yeah. and, and things like that do you do you think that um, with that type of program that there is there are even more opportunities for uh, external companies or or even uh, local companies getting the right skill set in to almost fast track them. You mentioned rooftop solar. Yeah. You know, yeah. it, 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 the other byproduct of rooftop solar is it, it creates a lot of jobs. So yeah. It becomes somewhat circular, yeah. doesn't it? True, true. Uh, I think there's an opportunity for investment uh, in Botswana. There's an, certainly in the renewable space, uh, we don't have players around uh, that space. So I think it's an opportunity for both local and international companies. You, you need international companies with a proven record because you don't want to experiment and have a, this huge project that fails on account of you just want the locals to do it. So I think in terms of mixture, we are looking at locals and international players. Uh, international players bring with them the experiences from their countries because they would have done it uh, much earlier and some of the problems we think are problems that have long encountered them. And yes, it also provides an opportunity for a secondary market uh, or a secondary industry in terms of you know, solar power, you know, people starting to manufacture you know, panels and other things like that. Yeah, we think it's, it's a great opportunity for a country like ours, which also enjoys credit ratings, you know, uh, positive credit ratings from international credit ratings. And we, well, yeah, we don't provide the group the sovereign guarantee, but since 1965, we have been importing solar. We've been importing power from South Africa. We have never defaulted on our payment, and therefore we think we provide a, a, a quite a safe uh, investment destination. And, 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 and one of the things as well is, you know, um, you don't want to be completely reliant on other people's energy sources as well. So renewables yes. gives you a way of mitigating yes. that, uh, uh, that that reliance. True, you know? true, true that. Yeah. And in terms of, uh, uh, you know, I suspect that uh, if you could fast forward 10 years time uh, in terms of looking ahead about where, uh, where you are, one of the other big questions that always comes up is, uh, you know, having a, having a continuity of policy because mm -hmm. there, there is a, uh, a, a, a creating this energy transition, mm -hmm. uh, to, to give it a, a, a word, is is not a three-year battle, no, no. two-year it's no. 15 years yes you know uh, uh, what are some of the things that you feel uh, uh, individually that, that need to be put in place so that you have you have that ability to have a long-term vision and it doesn't change every time yeah. of like you know, yes i think i think one of the things has that has to be put in place and we are we are busy putting that in place is that we will have our energy policy uh, coming up uh, for debate in parliament you know, in Parliament, is, uh, is a, you have both all the parties uh, represented, they debate, they agree, they uh, propose amendments, and therefore that becomes a national policy. And that doesn't depend on who is in power five years or ten years from now. It will be something that has had the buy-in of all parties. Secondly, in terms of the legal framework, we have established a, a parastatal uh, or an authority uh, is called Botswana Energy Regulatory Authority, basically to protect both the consumer and the customer, you know, the, and the investor, uh, because we we believe that you know investors need, you know, and everybody else actually need uh, you know a fair pay ground and to know that the investment is safe, and to have a legislation which they can 
fall back on in terms of the investment. So you're almost abs abstracting it from uh, uh, politics. So yeah. you have like an independent regulator. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I'm just conscious of time, and we're coming to the end of our time. Is uh, uh, you know if uh, if there are investors watching and and so on, which I hope they are, because we we you yes. know we broadcast this back into the uh, into our network. Uh, you know what uh, what would you say to them about the sort of investment potential um, you know within your country and um, not just now, but some of the other things that you're going to bring into the mix uh, in the short to mid-term? Short to long term, uh, uh, this, is, this is what we offer. Currently, we are looking at developing a 300 million strate uh, strategic floor reserve. Uh, that's a that's three billion pooler. Uh, we are currently invest you know, investigating the funding model for it. We are upgrading our coal uh, uh, power state power station uh, is called Murukule B. Uh, we are we have floated at tender 400 megawatts. We hope that this will just the first phase of it. It will move to 300 megawatts eventually. But we are starting first off with the 100 megawatts uh, to gain the necessary experience. We are also in terms of what we are doing. We are looking at the, you know, the coal liquid, uh, the coal to liquid. Uh, we've got, uh, Coal bed methane, so that we are investigating, and therefore we say we do have uh, investment opportunities in the gas space, and we are, you know, also looking at uh, a pipeline uh, from a petroleum pipeline from South Africa to Botswana. Uh, those are what is in the immediate and um, in the immediate term. Well, it sounds like you're going to be busy. Uh, well, <laughs> certainly, certainly, one is busy, one is busy, uh, and that is why I'm here. I like. Uh, one of the things that uh, I've liked about coming to conferences of this nature mm -hmm. is that you get to know what is happening, what, what is current, uh, you know, currently happening in the world uh, around the energy space. And, and, and there's so much movement in the yeah. technology side yeah. and everything. Yeah. Well, uh, Minister, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much for taking the time to, to be with us. Yeah. Uh, and uh, thank you as well for watching. Uh, it's been a, another interview at AEFTV. 2017 in Copenhagen and it's a bit sunnier today so that's good. Thank you for having me here. Yeah. Thank you.